Bible Baptist Church, where Reverend Walter L. Ingram Jr. is pastor. We invite you to worship with us now as Reverend Ingram brings us a word. I'm going to put on my robe. Tell the story how I made it over. Anybody making it over this morning? yesterday, but it's good to be in the house of worship this morning. Amen. I want to thank my husband for being here with me uh, this Amen. morning. Amen. And you all helped me um, celebrate and thank, first of all, this choir, the musician. You got Usher standing on the door, making sure you all right up in here. Y'all come on and give them a hand back this morning. This morning to uh, Miss Gloria, who's in the choir. Um, it's, 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 it's good when you can come in to God's house, and as I walked up the stairs, she was just a waving at me, and uh, she don't know how much I needed that wave this morning, so thank you. And also thank you to Deacon Ellaby. He has been such a joy uh, this morning. He, he greeted me at the door, and he has taken care of me. Uh, this far and I am really grateful for that as well. Alright, now that we got all that out of the way, y'all ready for God's word? Amen. Now, I gotta tell y'all something. Y'all a little quiet in here this morning and I'm okay with quiet. But as long as you stay quiet, I'm gonna keep on preaching. Amen. So I need some amens and some hallelujahs and preach father and then I'm gonna get to the end of my message. So I need y'all to help me this morning. Alright, our scripture this morning is coming from Jeremiah, chapter 1, verses 4 through 10. Jeremiah, chapter 1, verses 4 through 10. And it reads, The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. 
I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. At this sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, do not say, I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See today, I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. From those verses, I have chosen as a topic, God has you in his plan. God has you in his plan. A little boy came from church looking visibly upset. His mother asked, what's wrong with you? We learned a stupid song in Sunday school today. What was the song, the mother asked? It says, Jesus wants us to be a sunbeam. What's stupid about that, asked the mother. The little boy fuming, the little boy mad. I don't want to be a sunbeam. I want to be a fireman. And just like the little boy, I can remember growing up wanting to be a teacher. I used to line the chairs up in my bedroom and I would teach the chairs and also grade papers. So in my mind, I just knew that I was going to be a teacher. But God had a different plan. Do you ever stop and wonder, what is the meaning of your life? Why are you here? What are you supposed to be doing? Those are truly some fascinating questions. You can't imagine how many times I've asked myself those same questions. And I want you to know that I also question God. You see, when God called me into the ministry, I told him you have the wrong strong sister. I told him that I am supposed to be a teacher, not a preacher. I'm supposed to be a teacher in the Doherty County school system. So I ran for a very, 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 very long time because I did not want to be God's preacher. Some of you have decided your future, what you want to do. Matter of fact, how many parents in here have already worked out your child or your grandchildren's future? You know what college he or she will go to, what their profession will be. You're hoping for a doctor, a lawyer, a judge, a principal, who he or she, you want to pick out who they going to marry, where they will live, and the list will go on and on. But I stand here today to tell you that in spite of what I wanted and in spite of what you wanted, God had a different plan and a better plan for our lives. God has a purpose for everything under heaven. And he has a purpose for you and for me. You see, we might be like the little boy who wanted to be a fireman. But God's purpose and God's plan is what counts. So from our scriptures and our topic this morning, I want to give you four points from the life of Jeremiah. So here we go. Point number one. I knew you. So as we look at our scriptures for today, we see God having a conversation with a young Jeremiah. And God says to him in verse 5, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. God, in all of his infinite wisdom, had Jeremiah on his mind even before he was formed in his mother's belly. This means that before Jeremiah's parents ever became intimate with each other, God knew him. Although his mother is unnamed, she was yet godly. But Jeremiah came out of her womb sanctified and destined to be a prophet for the nation. His father, Hilkiah, was a high priest. 
we can almost conclude that Jeremiah's birth was an intentional setup. Just based on his heritage, God knew the plans that he had for Jeremiah would make an impact in the lives of others so much that he ordained him even for men could attempt to validate him. Some of y'all waiting on other people to validate you. Have mercy. God chose and approved Jeremiah. Well, saints, I have good news for you today. Most of us thought this was only about brother Jeremiah. But let me share with you what Jeremiah told me to tell you this morning. God is no respect of person. God knew us too. By the way, he knew all about our imperfections. And yet, he still chose us. He knew that we were going to mess up. He knew that we would sin daily. But he still chose us. Sometimes I look back, and you know how people say, yeah, I look back over my life, and I wonder how in the world did I get to this point? You see, with all of my sinful ways, as messed up as my life is, as much as I hurt people, God still chose me. There were some things I've done, and if the truth be told, I would disown my own self. But thanks be unto God that he looks beyond our faults and he knows and sees our needs. He goes on to say, before you were born, I consecrated you. In other words, while you were in your mother's belly, I separated and set you apart. So it is safe to say that God prepared Jeremiah for what was to come even before he was born. You see, mama thought that Jeremiah was in there just kicking around in the womb. But God said, because I knew you, that was me separating you from everybody else, preparing you for greatness, covering you with my power. Point number two, I appointed you. At the end of verse five, he says, I have appointed you a prophet to the nations. I told you earlier that Jeremiah was born into a priestly family. From his father on back, all of his family were priests. That means his daddy, his granddaddy, and uh, his great daddy were all priests. And because they were all priests, Jeremiah was expected to be a priest. But God had greater plans for Jeremiah's life. He was called, Jeremiah was called to be a prophet. And if you have to understand in those days that the priests were loved, respected and honored all the days of their lives, but not the prophets. The prophets were not received very well because they were the mouthpiece of God. In other words, God would speak directly to the prophet. And he would tell the people what thus said the Lord. The prophets would tell them things that they didn't want to hear. You got to look after the poor. You're prostituting yourselves to the world's standards. And if you don't turn yourselves around and obey God, then you are headed for destruction. So the prophet would tell them things that they didn't want to hear. So back in those days, it was not popular to be a prophet. And this is not at all the type of ministry that Jeremiah was looking forward to. And just like Jeremiah, we sometimes ignore the call God has on our life because it's unpopular. But when God has appointed you, you can do it even when it's unpopular. I want you to know this morning that I want the best for you. But most importantly, I want God's appointment for you. Whatever he has ordained, appointed, and called you to do this morning. Even when it's unpopular. Even when we don't understand it. And even when we don't want to do it. We have to answer the call. Sometimes, like Jeremiah, we find ourselves making excuses. Verse 6 through 8 says, Atlas Sovereign Lord, I said, 
I do not know how to speak. I am too young. That's Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I don't know how to talk. And I'm too young to be doing this, God. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am too young. And then I got some older people sitting here thinking you too old to do what God has called you to do. But I'm going to tell you this morning, don't say you too old. You must go. God told Jeremiah, you must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Well, like many of us, when God calls us, Jeremiah began to come up with all of these excuses. I'm too young. I can't do it. I wouldn't know what to say. Jeremiah's excuses are no different from ours. The bottom line is that in our modern society, we seem to think that we know better than God. We ignore the call God has on our life because we are full of excuses. I hear some of you this morning saying, God, I will be the only one doing it. God, that doesn't make sense. God, I don't know the outcome. You know, when we can't see the end, we, we were scared to do it. God, can you please do it my way? Our problem is that we have too many excuses. Matter of fact, I hear Noah this morning saying, build an ark, but God is not raining. I hear Peter saying, you want me to step out of the boat, but I might drown. I hear Moses saying, you want me to lead the people out of Egypt, but I don't speak well. Again, Jeremiah's excuse was, I'm too young. Mount Pilgrim, people of God, what is your excuse this morning? I know that God has appointed you. But because of the same excuse you've been using over and over again, you have refused to move. Some of you are okay with coming into the building on Sunday morning. But God, don't ask me to do anything else. Don't ask me to go take care of the sick and shut in. Don't ask me to go stand on the corner and take care of the homeless people. We got all kind of excuses for God. Then God tells Jeremiah again, do not say I am too young. In my sanctified imagination, God is telling Jeremiah and us to stop giving him all those excuses. It amazes me how we can make plans and time for everything except for what God tells us to do. I see parents taking children to, their children to cheerleading, football practice, football camp. I know you get up every morning to go to work and you be on time. But let God ask you to do something. God tells Jeremiah that he must go. Go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I've commanded you. In other words, you don't get to choose your path or your words. God knew the people in whom Jeremiah would have to talk to. And thus he knew the exact words that needed to be said. When we are obedient to God, he will give us the right words. And oh, by the way, let me just throw this in. If you are uh, not going to be obedient to what God has asked you to do, I need you to stop criticizing and critiquing those that do. You want to sit on the pew. You don't want to help with anything. Uh, Deacon Ellaby asked for some men. I need the men to show up. Amen. We cannot get complacent and, and be okay with just sitting on the pew. Amen. God is not going to come down and do the work. He uses us as his vessel. Amen. Amen. Stop occupying. Stop taking up some seats up in here. Mm -hmm. With your negative comments and your negative thoughts. I hear God saying, Mount Pilgrim Baptist Church, located at 1501 Newton Road. I looked up y'all address. All been in Georgia. God says, I'm getting ready to send Mount Pilgrim out. I'm getting ready to send you out to the masses. He says, I'm getting ready to send you out to the lost souls. There are some people right in this community that need to know that Mount Pilgrim is in this community. He 
he says, I'm getting ready to send you out to the sinners, the drug dealers and the alcoholics. I'm getting ready to send you out to the schools. There are some children that need to know that Mount Pilgrim is in this community. I'm getting ready to send you out to the least of them. I'm getting ready to send you out to pray for the sick, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, visit the prison. And when you get there, Mount Pilgrim, tell them what I have commanded you to say. You see, you don't have to make up anything. You don't have to tell them your ideas. You don't even have to give them a Bible. Just know that you are appointed to do what I've called you to do. Yeah. Point number three, I will be with you. Yeah. Verse eight says, do not be afraid of them. For I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. In other words, he is saying, go and do what I've ordained, called, and appointed you to do. And you don't have to be afraid because I am with you. Yeah. God says, I know there are some things I will tell you to do. And you are afraid to do them. He says, there are some places I will send you. But you are afraid to go. Yeah. But God says in Deuteronomy 31 verse 8. He says that I will never leave you nor forsake you. He says in Joshua verse 9. Have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you. He tells us in Psalms 23 verse 4. He says that yea no I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thy, th thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff will comfort me. So you don't have to go by yourself. And then this is one of my favorites, Psalms 27, verse 1. He says, the Lord is my life and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? So Mount Pilgrim, you don't have to be afraid this morning. I just need you to get up and go and do what God has called you to do. Tell somebody that's sitting close by you, don't be scared. If God gave it to you, go ahead and do it. You know, this morning I was teaching our new member orientation before I came over. And I was talking about Moses, and Moses was giving God all of these excuses. Moses said, God, I don't speak well. Moses said, what if they don't listen to me? But in spite of Moses was obedient to the word of God. God had chosen him to deliver his people out of bondage. And just think, if Moses had been fearful, just think for a minute. If he had not, if he was not obedient to the word of God, would they still be in bondage today? Because Moses was scared to go. There are some people in this community, Mount Pilgrim, that's going to be where they are if you don't go. I need y'all to go. Point number four, and this is the last point, so y'all better get it. And y'all doing good with your amen, so we on our way to the end. I equipped you. God says, I equipped you. Verse nine says, then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. God promises to be with Jeremiah and equip him for the task. Yeah. Jeremiah would need those words of assurance. You see, as a prophet, he would be mocked. Uh -huh. He would be humiliated, yeah. beaten in prison, yeah. threatened with death, locked in a dungeon, uh -huh. be without human contact, yeah. and abandoned by everyone. And just know that when you say, yes, Lord, yes, uh -huh. to your will and to your way, some of that stuff can happen to you. You might find yourself out there by yourself. But it's okay because God already told you I will be with you. I told you being a prophet was unpopular. And yet Jeremiah never once gave up. He lived to see his prophecies fulfilled and his name vindicated. Whatever assignment God has given you this morning, he has already made the touch. He has already made provisions. He has already equipped you for the task. Because of the touch, you have all 
and everything that you need. Anybody need a touch from the master this morning? I hear Isaiah saying this morning, Lord, here I am. Send me. Anybody willing to say, Lord, here I am? Here I am, Lord. Send me. Don't worry about who's sitting to my left. Don't worry about who's sitting to my right. But Lord, here I am. Send me. I dare you this morning to tell God to send you. Just like Jeremiah, just like Isaiah, Lord, here I am. Send me. I will go where you want me to go. I will say what you want me to say. And I will do, Lord, what you want me to do. I dare you, dare you, to tell God this morning that you trust his plan for your life. Because God, in your plan, you know all about me. I told you this morning that he knows all of our mess-ups. He knows our imperfections, but he still... He still chooses us. So God, in your plan, you have appointed me in spite of. In your plan, you will be with me. He says he'll never leave you nor forsake you. In your plan, God, you will equip me for the task. Y'all looking at me? Y'all looking at me? But I heard David saying this morning, God equipped me. With the bear and the lion. See, God knew he was going to have a fight on his hand. So he went ahead and prepared David with the bear and the lion. I hear Paul saying, you equip me on the Damascus road. I hear the lady with the issue of blood saying, you equip me while I was walking through the crowd. I hear Paul and Silas saying, you equip me while we were sitting in jail. I hear I hear Joseph saying, you equip me when my brothers put me in the pit. My pilgrim, I want to know this morning, do you trust God with your plan? Do you trust God with your life? Do you trust God with your ministry this morning? I need to remind somebody this morning that you are not an accident. That even though he knew all about you, even though he knew all your stuff, he says, I still chose you. I hear God saying, I made you. And so I know all about you. He says, I chose you. He says, I've covered you. And I've equipped you for the call. You were made. You were set apart for a very important task. And that is to glorify God and reflect his image. So let me remind somebody this morning that you can be a fireman high and a sunbeam all at the same time. God has appointed you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and to tear down to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. He has given you the power and the authority to do all these things. So I need you to go where he wants you to go. I need you to do what he wants you to do. And I need you to say what he wants you to say. Now here, it's time that you get up and do what God has called you to do. And you see, he's called you individually. There are some things that God has told you to do. And then there's those things that he's called the church to do. And so God just needs you to get up and do what he's called you to do. All right, y'all, I'm almost at the end of my message. So I can hope you got it this morning. That God don't want you to be a pew member. God needs you to get outside of these walls. Do you know that you can do what God has called you to do on your job? That you can do what God has called you to do in your house? There are some people in your house and your family need to know who God is. We got to get up. We got to get to moving out. We, we're living, in, a, we're living in, in some desperate times. If you watch, is any who watch TV in here? You see what's going on all over the world. All over the world. Trump got about, what, four or five indictments, and he still wanted to be your president. We got to get out. 
and tell somebody about who God is. So you got to get ready to get in your get on your ministry and go out and do what God has called and equipped you to do. And if you're a little scared, that's okay. People often ask me, what is faith? What is the definition of faith? I tell them, for me, it's doing it scared. Because I can be scared, but if God told me to do it, I'm going to go and do it. So my time has come to an end. But before I go, Jeremiah said, Father, don't leave without telling them what Jesus the Christ did for us on the cross. Yes. He said somebody needs to know the power of salvation. Yes. So you know how they marched him to Calvary. Yes. You know how they stretched him out. Yes. You know how they put a crown of thorns on his head. Yes. And then they pierced him in his side. Yes. You do know that he bled. Yes. You do know that he died. Yes. And then they had the audacity to put him in a borrowed tomb. He laid there all Friday night. He laid there all Saturday. And then he laid there all Saturday night. But guess what? Guess what? It's something about Sunday morning. Early Sunday morning. He got up. Because he got up, you can go out, you can move, you can do ministry just like he's equipped for you to do because he got up. Y'all come on and give God some praise. And for that we ought to be grateful. For that we ought to give him praise. Because it's because it's of him that we can, my pastor like to say, be who we be. And do what we do. Because he got up. You have been listening to worship at Mount Pilgrim Baptist Church, Reverend Walter Ingram Jr. Pastor. We hope you've enjoyed this message and we invite you to worship with us each and every Sunday at our church located at 1501 Newton Road, Albany, Georgia. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.